So the slotted wheel rolls to the right without slipping with a constant speed of 0.6 meters per second of its center O. Simultaneously, the motion of the sliding block A is controlled by a mechanism not shown, so that x dot is 450 meters, oh, I'm sorry, millimeters per second, and x double dot is 0 millimeters per second squared. So that's the rate it's moving within this slot. So we're asked to determine the magnitude of the velocity and acceleration of A, which is the block itself, and it's for the instant when x is 150 millimeters and theta is 30 degrees. So I think the best thing to start this question off is just making note of all the different information you're given and the different things that you're trying to find. So the first thing that we're told is that we have a constant speed of 0.6 meters per second and that relates to the center of the circle at O here. So I'm going to write this as the velocity of O is 0.6. All right, so we know it's a constant speed at point O. So if we have a constant speed, that means we have a zero acceleration. So we're then given a bunch of different information about how our block is moving within the slot. So x dot is 450. x double dot is zero. So that would suggest, again, it's got a constant speed in that slot. And we're also given the value of x. Um, and the angle that sits between the horizontal and the slot at this instant we're interested in is 30 degrees. So the two things we're looking for, one is the magnitude of the velocity of point A, so let's call that VA. And the other one is the magnitude of the acceleration at point A, so let's call that AA. All right, so we need to kind of think about a um, method to solve this question. And since we have a little block that's able to freely move within the slot, we're going to need to use a, a rotating coordinate system um, to deal with that. If this block was rigidly connected to something else, um, then we would just be able to use our standard coordinate system that doesn't rotate. So in setting this up, we need to define the x and y axes. I think it's easiest if you define one of your axes in line with the slots. So that's going to mean that I'm going to put the x axis this way. It's supposed to be along the line of the slot, although it's a bit dodgy looking. Okay. And the y axis is going to be 90 degrees to that. Okay. Alternatively, you could do a regular like vertical horizontal coordinate system. That's fine as well. Um, all, it, all it changes when you um, modify the angle that you define your axes with um, is um, which ones are kind of properties, I should say, are a little bit more challenging to define along that x and y axis, um, yeah, depending on what angle you put it at. So my preference is always to put it on the slot, as I said, but you don't have to. So let's make it very obvious. So the x, y axis are attached to the circle. So that's going to mean when the circle rotates, so too does the axis, it's at the same rate. And the other thing I want to mention is that I'm still going to have my z axis out of page. Alright, so Let's start off with looking for the velocity at point A here. Um, and we have an equation that relates together um, velocities um, when we have a rotating coordinate system. So obviously we want to include the velocity of A since that's the one we're interested in. And we need to relate it back to a second point. And this time the obvious choice is point O since we have already got its velocity um, given to us. So this is the equation that we need to use. And we're just going to go through and figure out what each term in it actually is. So the velocity of A is the unknown. There isn't anything that we can really do with it. That's just what's going to fall out of the equation. So let's now go with the velocity of point O. And we need to define this 0.6 meters per second, which we know is horizontal, along the x and the y axis, which have now um, put at some random angle. So in order to do that, let's draw a little picture off to the side. Okay, so we know it's a 0.6 meters per second vector. We know that the x-axis sits somewhere like this. The y-axis is going to be 90 degrees to it. Okay, and we know the angle that sits in here. 
because it's the same as theta in here, which we're given as 30 degrees. So doing vector addition, this is the component that sits on the x-axis, and this is the component that sits on the y-axis. So if we go with the x component first, it's going to be 0 0.6 cos 30, and it's pointing in the positive x direction, so it just gets an i. The other one's pointing in the positive y direction, so it's going to get a j. So if you simplify this, it becomes 0.52i plus 0.3j. All right, so let's move on to the next one, which is omega cross r. Okay, so omega in this case relates to the rate that the um, coordinate system is rotating at. So since we've attached it to the circle, it's going to be rotating at the same speed as the circle, which we're going to need to figure out. So if we're pulling it to the right, we'd expect it to rotate this way. So it's going to be the direction of alpha and omega. So let's work them out over here. So we know that V is equal to omega R. And if we rearrange for omega, it's going to be V on R. And we know that the velocity of the center point of this circle is 0.6 meters per second. And it's rotating about a circle of radius, um, well, 200 millimeters or 0 0.2 in meters so that we keep them consistent between top and bottom line. So that's going to tell us that we're rotating our circle and thus our coordinate system at 3 radians per second and it's clockwise. So we can also think about what alpha is, but if we've got our acceleration is zero, that came about because we had a constant velocity, um, it's going to be the same thing here. So if we're going to have a constant angular velocity of three radians per second, that means we're going to have an angular acceleration of zero. So that's going to come in handy when we do the acceleration analysis in a second. So let's pop this into our equation. So it's three radians per second, it's clockwise. So it's going to go in as negative 3k. And we need to multiply it by the radius. And the way we've written the equation here relating a and o together, this radius relates to the one of a relative to o. So this is why I've defined it along the um, my x-axis along the slot, because it makes it really easy to, t um, to figure out what this is. So a relative to o is just going to be whatever x value it is at this instant, which is 150 millimeters, or let's put it in meters to keep it consistent. It's going to be 0.15, and it's along the positive x-axis, so it gets an i. So if you multiply this one out, it becomes, let's write it out here, negative 0.45j. All right, so only one term left in this equation that we need to think about, and that is VREL. So for VREL, it relates to when you're standing on your coordinate system, you're rotating with the coordinate system, so all you're going to see is whether this block um, moves further away from you or toward you within the slot, since it's only restricted within the slot. So it's only able to move along the x-axis, so it's going to be something that just has an eye attached to it, and in this case, we're told that the rate that this happens is 450 millimeters per second. So we can write this in meters per second of 0.45. It's going to get an I because we're measuring X this way. Um, it's a positive value, so that means it's going to be moving away from us. All right, so now we just need to substitute everything back into our original equation, and we should be able to solve for the velocity of point A. So that's what we get, and if we put everything together, that's going to be our answer in meters per second. So it did ask us for the magnitude rather than the vector representation, so we can convert this into a magnitude if we want. Remember that this time our x-axis lies um, at some angle. so. The component along the x-axis here would be the 0.07. Got quite a big one along the y-axis. 
So this here would represent the magnitude of a VA. All right, so this becomes the answer for the magnitude of the um, velocity. So all that we need to do now is work out the magnitude of the acceleration. And for this, we need to apply the acceleration analysis, which follows pretty much the same method except applying the acceleration version of the equation. So if we're relating together points A and O, this is the equation. So now we're pretty much just going to go through and find out what each term is again um, to be able to sub back in. So the acceleration of point A is what we're trying to find out. There isn't really anything we can do with it, so we'll leave it. And we'll start with the acceleration of point O. So this is the centre of the circle, and we already discussed this before. We said that if we have a constant velocity at point O, it means we're going to have a zero acceleration. So the acceleration at point O is just zero. All right, so the next term is alpha cross r, and we've got a similar situation in that we said before that alpha was equal to zero. So if we scroll back up, we worked that we had a constant angular velocity of three radians per second, and because it was constant, this meant that alpha, the rate that our disk and also our coordinate system rotated at was zero. So if alpha is zero, alpha cross r is also gonna be zero. So our next term is the normal component. Okay, so we said that we have an angular velocity of 3 radians per second, and because it's clockwise, it's going to be negative. And we've also got to multiply by um, omega cross r, and we've worked that out before to be negative 0.45j um, from our velocity analysis, so we can just substitute that pre-simplified um, stuff in. So this becomes negative 0.45j. And when we multiply it out, we end up with negative 1.35i. So the next term, so it's going to be 2 times omega, which was negative 3k. And we need to multiply it by VREL. Again, because we did the velocity analysis, we can go and pinch it. So we've already simplified VREL to be 0.45i. So again, we can multiply this out, and it becomes negative 2.7j. All right, so final one, which is a rel. And this is the acceleration that we see um, when we're attached to the rotating coordinate system. So if we scroll back up, if we stand here on the origin, and we look out to our point of interest at A, we need to look at how fast it's either moving away to or toward us, and this is only going to be able to occur along the x-axis since it's restricted by the slot. So in this case, we've been told that x double dot, this dimension in here, the rate that it changes, is zero. So basically, again, it's going to have a constant velocity. Um, and when we substitute this into the equation, um, a rel is just going to be zero. Okay. So technically we would have said that it's equal to x double dot i, but since x double dot is zero, um, a rel becomes zero. So substituting in, we've actually ended up with quite a few of these things working out to be zero, so let's just get rid of them. So we can simplify the acceleration at point a to just be negative 1.35i minus 2.7j, and the units of this are going to be meters per second squared. So that's the vector representation. And if we want to find the magnitude of A, we can do that as well. Um, remember that if you were to find the angle, it um, this is going to matter where your axis actually lay. So for example, we said that the positive x-axis was this direction, like downwards. So ours is going to be, since it's negative, back up. So this is B1.35. And we've also got a negative for the j component, so that's going to be along the negative y-axis, which is kind of downish. So this here would represent the acceleration of point A in that kind of direction. Of course, that's a right angle in there. So finding it out, 
um, the answer becomes about 3.02 meters per second squared. Alright, so that's all we've got there for the um, acceleration and velocity of point A in absolute reference terms. Um, I'll see you in the next video.